On the other hand, there are those like Michael Fabricant, Conservative MP for Litchfield, uh, who feels that they should have stayed as they were. Uh, Good morning, Michael Fabricant. Good morning, Katia Adler. Good morning. (laughs) Why does this BBC decision bother you so much? Well, I think it's all a load of uh, political correctness gone absolutely mad. It's slavery to the woke generation. And it's all rather silly, really. I know that one of the reasons why they're not going to have a full choir is because of COVID. And I fully understand that. But, you know, Rule Britannia is a lovely song, actually, if you actually listen to all the words, not just the chorus. It's um, the final aria of a beautiful opera that was partly written in Litchfield in my own constituency at the George Inn, now the George Hotel, one of the best West in the country. I thought I'd get a little plug in there for it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, it's actually from the opera. It's called uh, The Mask of uh, Alfred, all about King Alfred fighting the uh, Vikings and succeeding. And if, like me, you enjoyed the BBC and now Netflix series, The Last uh, Kingdom, you, you'll understand what that's all about. But the point is, it's an opera and you can't have operas without words, but you could have one lady singing it gustily and I'd be happy with that. Well, OK, well, let me put this to you. So the, the <coughs> lyrics of Land of Hope and Glory, you know, from 1902, that well, they're reputedly inspired by Cecil Rhodes, you know, the imperialist and mining magnate, and his statue is being removed from an Oxford college following protests. And all of this comes, you know, amidst all the Black Lives Matter protests um, and awareness. So, you know, what do you say to people who are are offended by uh, some of the words in in Rule Britannia or or, or Land of Hope and Glory? Well, you know what? Oliver Dowden, the uh, Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport, came up with a very nice phrase yesterday, which I'm going to quote, because I think it sums it up, really. It says, confident, forward-looking nations don't erase their history. They add to it. And, you know, we did a lot of things that were wrong, But we also did a lot of things that were good. Well, you don't have to erase it, but do you have to celebrate it? I think, think, you know, that's the issue here. I think we're celebrating the song and the words. We're not celebrating necessarily uh, what happened at the time. Uh, You know, there is, uh, (laughs) I was talking about operas just now. There's The Magic Flute, which is one of my favourite operas. And there's a line in that uh, where a character called Monostatos sings, Ich bin schwarz und das ist hässlich, which is, I'm black and that is hateful. Um, you know, do you change the words? No, because that's what was written, and not very nice too, but that was what was written in the 18th century. Nobody's saying we should now ban the magic flute. Look, I think we've got to be adult about all this. Uh, you don't actually make the point against slavery just by banning and censoring things. And I think the BBC has been rather weak by even considering it. Um, we'll come to the, the BBC in just a moment. Uh, but um, <laughs> right. you know, the, the, the Prime Minister has previously said, you know, we shouldn't uh, deal with uh, symbols. We, we should deal with substance. But you've dismissed, um, you know, criticism uh, um, of Land of Hope and Glory and Rule Britannia as, you know, giving into a, the, the woke generation. But let me put to you uh, the founder of Chinooke, that's an orchestra whose musicians are majority black, Asian and ethnically diverse. Um, she recently emailed the BBC proms chiefs and asked them, to drop Rule Britannia. Um, And she said, if the BBC didn't drop it, she said, I will feel invisible with my people and our history. If the BBC are talking about Black Lives Matter and their support for the movement, how can you possibly have Rule Britannia as the last concert in any concert? This is not a a woke individual. This is a a black woman feeling very strongly. Well, it sounds more like blackmail to me. Uh, It sounds like she's threatening the BBC. And look... Uh, it's rather like your commentator from B- Birmingham University, who is, he admits he's never even watched the proms. Uh, look, we've got some great traditions in this country, and if people don't like it, they can switch the television off. It's not inciting racism. No one actually wants racism in this country, and we've actually got a, a good record on that. We abolished slavery years before the Americans did. And in 1740, when Rule Britannia was written, uh, the British government of the time gave British nationality to Huguenots and Jewish people. I, I uh, and that was not possible in other countries in I, the rest of Europe. We've I, got a lot to be proud of. I, I think perhaps, Mr Fabricant, there will be those listening, there will be some people listening who find your 
quip there about blackmail, um, offensive in itself and and dismissive of of of, of a very huge issue that not, that this country is struggling with, that well, many I countries are, are struggling with. I don't. I don't think a, a small minority of people, you know, should be dictating what the majority can or cannot listen to. Are you dismissing the a, Black Lives Matter movement? In I'm not dismissing any movement. I'm dismissing the lady who wrote a rather threatening letter that you read out to the BBC. And it seems that the BBC succumbed to it before they thought differently. Well, you, you now you're saying that it was threatening at the BBC, but before you were having a dig at the BBC, isn't it with, with issues like this, the BBC is funded by licence payers, uh, license payers and supposed to represent uh, the views of everybody who consumes the bit of everyone who consumes the bbc so the bbc's found a middle way it believes land of hope and glory rule britannia will be played but uh, but w- without the lyrics um, as as they were originally well, i think BBC in the first claiming la- last night the of B- the proms isn't the bbc damned if it does and damned if it doesn't oh it's a difficult position for the bbc but they've got themselves into that situation by listening to a small minority of people who are trying to censor what is done, you know, on the BBC. And uh, we're getting into a much broader area now, but I think that's utterly wrong. And, you know, you sort of picked on by using the word blackmail. Are we now to try and change words? Because words like blackmail contain the word black. I mean, that's some nonsense. I suspect you weren't really saying that, but that's how it came out. And that's wrong, Catcher.